Today on Queensland Weekender, we prove that kids don't need theme parks or five-star resorts yeah. to have a great holiday. How good was that? <laughs> it's good old-fashioned fun, Morton Island style. Yeah, the kids know how to fish. Action, stunning views and sensational sunsets. Stick around to see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Again, and welcome to Queensland Weekend for another Saturday. Fantastic to have your company. Well, this is something that we've been trying to put together for a long time, and that's a big family adventure. We've done plenty of boys' weeks away, haven't we? But nothing like this. Yeah, fantastic. And in some way, shape, or form, these kids all connected to us. Us, us. I can't <laughs> believe it. it. Looks like there's a tribe here. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Now, kids, gather around because I've got a bit of news for you. This week, no television, no video games. No iPods, no iPads, no Game Boys, no electricity where we're going. How do you feel about that? It's stunned, stunned they are. silence. And no phone, best of all. No text, no phone noise, no one ringing me. Fantastic. We're going on holidays like Andrew and I went on holidays as kids. Yeah. Are you it's excited? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go and do something. Come on, let's go. We're holidaying on the second largest sand island in Australia. It feels like we're a million miles from anywhere, but Morton Island is only 40 kilometres from Brisbane. I am a Morton tragic. I've been bringing the kids to this magical place since they were born. For us, the trip over on the Mike Hat Ferry is part of the adventure. The 75 minute journey gives us enough time to let the air out of the tyres, pick up some supplies and introduce the Mirosh mob to one of the Miller family Morton must-dos. There you go. There you go, guys. Perfect. Smiley pies all round. Well, you know you're on holidays when it's uh, 9 in the morning and you're sharing a pie to kids, don't you? Yeah. It's the breakfast of champions, isn't it? Sure is. Day trippers can walk on and walk off my cat, but if you're driving, four-wheel drives engage the moment you hit the beach and that's the way it stays because there are no sealed roads. Before you arrive, keep in mind you'll need to sort out permits to be able to bring the Forby and also to camp. Don't drop it. Lots of paper is really good in your head. It stops the things melting because it makes the air cold air stay. Beniwa is one of five Morton Island National Park campgrounds. Preparing for a week away with this many troops could be enough to put you off going in the first place. If this sounds familiar, or you're an inexperienced camper, we've found a way to take the muscle out of camping. Everybody settled now. Good to see you all your tents. For more than 10 years, Tom from Morton Bay Escapes has been leading expeditions and providing a campsite for tour and school groups visiting the island. But the business is evolving. So traditionally it's been the realm of sort of school holiday excursions or you know school excursions or field trips, that sort of thing, but now you're opening it up to whoever wants to come. We've always provided everything for everyone, whereas this is more of an accommodation style thing where you can just come over as if you were staying in an apartment up the sunny coast, bring your four-wheel drive and your food and everything else is here for the grassroots of what you're going to do. Never plan to get anywhere in a hurry over here. Day trips need to be worked out around low tide and beach and track conditions are unpredictable. But that's all part of the adventure. And let's face it, with scenery like this, who wants to be rushing? It's a 40 minute run from our campsite to Yellow Patch, a top spot for eager anglers, but first we need some bait. You know what we use these for? Catching whiting. They're the best whiting bait and brim bait in the whole ocean. That's quite a big one. They say that you can judge a bloke's manliness and fishing prowess by how he pulls a worm. Andrew is a seasoned sandwormer, so I think I'll swallow my pride and leave it up to him. A really good trick with them is to keep them dry. So what we do, look for some really nice soft powdery sand. You roll the worms in it, like that, and you take a lot of the moisture out of them. A really good tip is to wrap them in newspaper, like grab a handful of sand like that, wrap them in newspaper, 
put them in the warmest part of your esky. Don't put them on ice or whatever. Put them up the top in a corner and they'll keep for three or four days and you'll catch more whiting and flattered than you know what to do with. Let's hope that's the case for us. Now, Andrew may have worked as a commercial fisherman, but I'm not so sure about this technique. To me, this is the ultimate way to fish with kids. It's called set and forget. Bit of PVC pike. Cast your line out, put the drag on, walk away. Check it every few minutes. When it's bent, there's a fish on it. Send the kids down and wind it in. So I just don't get that. It's like having a shower with a raincoat on. I mean, you can take the boy out of commercial fishing, but you can't take commercial fishing what out of the boy. You're saying we were lazy. Well, no, but what about the thrill of the bite? You know, oh, the, no. the, the, the sand between your toes, the... You know, the sun setting and the... This is about fishing with kids. They're playing footy on the beach, set a few rods, whiting jumps on. Lily, wind your line in. It's a thr thrill of their lives, you know? Like, short attention spans like me, most kids. <laughs> well, you can stand here all done and go kick the footy of the kids. All right, I'll keep an eye on those rod tips. No, nah, don't worry. <laughs> It seems that the fish are on holidays as well, but that doesn't phase us. After just one day on the island, all of the realities of life on the mainland sink with a magic Morton sunset.